What's up, folks? David Soto Jr. here, and this is the David Soto Jr. Podcast. What's up, folks? Welcome to episode 65 of the David Soto Jr. Podcast. I am your host, David Soto Jr. Today, the thought came to me as I was waking up that I should do something different instead of just trying to get deep, instead of trying to get political, instead of trying to talk about COVID, I'm going to do something more fun. I'm going to talk about what I would write, I would title the book, The Story of Us. And it would be the story of you know who and me. And you know who is the mother of my children and my wife. And this spanned the story so far was spanned twenty years, to include a thirteen-year separation. It's an interesting story. I would write this story. I would write this. This story led me to outline a novel, and it led me to. Uh, my book that I wrote that I have an ending now to Van Life for that that uh, it's a collection of stories and and stuff that I wrote over those two years that I was living in my van. This is an ending to that. This is an ending. This story brings is is just gonna have such an impact on many other stories. There's so much to it, but with working full time now for the past couple of years, it's been really hard to keep up with writing. Uh, I have other projects that I'm not writing or not finishing, and so starting this one would be, I don't know, many years down the road, maybe retirement, I don't know. But I got the idea this morning that I'll just tell it. I'll just tell the story. And so that's what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it in this podcast, and it will take a while. So, this is part one. Part one starts in somewhere around 2001. I was just a young man. I didn't have all these gray, I didn't have a beard, I didn't have all these gray hairs, and I worked at Vatterot College as a heating and air conditioning refrigeration instructor. I worked here in St. Louis at um, the campus is in St. Anne. I worked at the St. Anne campus. And Vatterot's schedule was five hours on with like a four hour break and then another five hours. It was a split shift. So you teach class in the morning, have about a four hour break come back, teach class in the evening. We did that Monday to Thursday, kind of a great schedule. I had three day weekends every weekend. It was phenomenal. It's the only job I ever loved, to tell you the truth. I tell you all that because of that break in between. That break in between, it's you know considerably longer than a lunch hour, so I would go to the gym and work out. I used, I used to lift weights a lot and enjoyed you know, just having muscles and getting big and stronger. And uh, So I went to the gym every day. Bally Total Fitness. I don't even know if there's still a thing. But this is, this is key. The Bally Total Fitness is the key to the story of us. So every day I would go to the gym lift weights in between class uh maybe i would go back home i ended up buying i had an apartment real close and then i bought a house real close and so i lived in saint anne uh probably go to gym then go home eat something to eat and then go back to work this bally total fitness was in a strip mall in saint anne and it only the only glass, as far as windows or doors to the outside, was the main entrance. 
So you'd enter the main entrance of the gym, there's a reception area, there's some offices, and the layout of the gym was to the right with some weight room, in front of you was a track and cardio, on the other side was actually a pool, the other side of the track was a pool, and then to the left was more gym equipment, weights and such. But there was this narrow passage to get into the place, and then everything else was just cinder block brick. And it was very, very dark and dingy and lit up with with fluorescent lights. And it just was kind of just gross. It wasn't the, it wasn't, I wouldn't ever, ever go to a gym like this ever again. But it was literally next door to the college, the, 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 the tech school that I taught at. And it was just a no-brainer to join. So I joined up, worked out there, uh, Monday through Thursday, Fridays, I'm pretty sure I didn't go. And one day, I'm in the gym, and I'm hitting weights, getting my bicep curls on, and as dark and dingy as this gym was, it was almost like a cave. Um, I saw a light coming from the main, like an extra light coming from the main entrance. Now, there was some daylight coming through, but it kind of stopped. And when you went to the sides of the gym, it just got darker. But I saw even more light. I saw more of a of a glow, and I've seen it before. I'm like, what is that light over there? Pause for a second. If you've read Moncada, uh, the third book in my series about Pierre, this will all sound familiar because I took this exact thing that's happening now that I'm telling you now, and I put that in my story about Pierre. So I see this light. I'm wondering where it is, what it's coming from, why is it there? I've seen it before, and I think I, if I have to go see what that is, what is this light that's coming? In? And it's 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 at the side. It's I'm down here getting my biceps, and then there's this glowing light coming out, and I just don't know what it is. I've seen it before. I've have to go check it out. So I start walking around. And I walk to the main entrance, and I kind of turn the corner to see what this light is. And it's this tall, blonde girl. And she's smiling and laughing. And she's out of my league. Like, just in this quick, in this quick view, this quick assessment, I realize that she's dress some nice beautiful blonde hair so straight and flowing beautiful smile pearly white teeth um green hazel eyes like this girl is not is too beautiful for me she's out of my league um probably has a boyfriend probably like all these thoughts go and i just saw her for a second like i'm like oh oh Ooh, that's a pretty girl. That glow, that was the source, right? That was the source of that light. Was this beautiful blonde girl? I say girl because she was young. We were young. And everything about her was beautiful. And she had this glow. It's almost as if someone was trying to get my attention, right? Someone is like, you need to meet this girl. You need to see this girl. And so repeatedly, I would see this light drawing my attention to it. But like, mm, what is this? What's this weird light? I'm not going over there. I'm not going to see. It. I, I'm, I'm just going to ignore it. Finally, I couldn't ignore it. And that was, you know who? That was the woman that I was going to marry and have children with. 
That was my wife. She was the source of that light. Of course, I never, I didn't say a word to her. Um, I came around the corner. I was like, Ooh, what's going on? What is this? Oh, the look on my face. Like, we made eye contact. And I'm sure she was like, ooh, is this a gross guy? Or, I, I don't know. And I can't ask her because she doesn't remember. But I remember us making contact. She was smiling. It was like a slow motion in a movie. She's like laughing at somebody in the office. Ha, ha, ha. And she turned around. Her hair was waving. And, and, and she looked at me. And she saw me staring at her. And I was probably in shock. And, and just, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And I quickly looked away and went back and did my bicep curls. Um, and that was probably the last time I saw her for a couple of years. She worked for ballet. She managed or did something but she was she went to all of the uh, she went to all of the different gyms and so oh my gosh what's going on here oh my f Instagram live ended Why did it do that? <laughs> Anyways. Well, that sucks. Um, so she went to all these gyms, and it was just random that I would run into her or see her because she had to go through, she got to go to Illinois, she got to go to different parts of St. Louis, all over the place. She did all kinds of stuff. It was just random that I would that I saw her. This is timing. And I don't think I saw her ever since that moment for at least another two years. I moved, I carried on with my uh, teaching and seeing the women that I was seeing, uh, dating or whatever. Uh, I went to 9-11 happened. I went to war. For a few months, I was a bouncer. Oh, that's the key. That's the next step. That's the next step to the story. Is I went to, um, I got deployed. And that's what that's what will continue. I got deployed. There's a couple years in there where I don't see this girl <clears throat> again. But the key is that deployment. which I will talk about next time. I'm really disappointed in this. My phone went off for the Facebook Live or the Instagram Live and terminated the broadcast. Anyway, <clears throat> whoa, right into the mic. That's awesome. Anyways, folks, you can find me on Instagram obviously t Twitter Twitter and you can find me on TikTok now I'm trying to see what I can do there I thought this may be something I could post on there I don't know and I was going to try and keep this down to 15 minutes so I can make this a series on Instagram but well it's definitely under 15 minutes but it got cut off we'll see um, that's it it's a shorty shorty one all right, folks, thanks for, appreciate you tuning in.